Welcome indeed. Good morning. Welcome to the Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Nappy II. Excited to be here. I have a very interesting subject I want to talk about tonight, the movie Monsters, Inc. If you've ever seen it, it's a really good children's movie, but it may be based on more than just uh, you know, a fictional tale from someone's imagination. And I'm going to get into the exact parallels and reasons why I want to say that today. My hope is to inspire a new direction of thought and have you consider uh, you know, some other opportunities and avenues to explore. Uh, before I jump into the heavy stuff, just want to talk a little bit about this new endeavor. We're a part of Service of Change Radio. This is uh, the second po- new podcast that we're adding to it. We have a big archive of our change casts that are flowing through it. Have a new change cast that we'll be working on this evening with Joel and Lori. Uh, you know, as we get ready to uh, inspire people for our movement of, of positive change in the world. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on lately I just want to touch on, um, but I'm not going to go too in-depth to it, but I want to give my nappy's two cents on it here. You know, first of all, with the, uh, you know, the Confederate flag, I think there's been a lot of controversy. I'm about a week late in even addressing this, but, uh, you know, people are getting really upset over it. I know there's emotions that are tied to it, um, you know, but at, at the end of the day, I, I think we're, we're focused, so focused on a flag and someone's choice to express you know their opinion of that flag whether you agree with it or not and we're, we miss so many other more important issues in this world because this flag catches the big media catches the attention catches the headlines and i think you're being distracted in all honesty you know and, and i'll give a you know my comparison of when i was in the army i remember i, I came to a point where I, I was extremely offended if somebody felt the need to burn the american flag and step on it and then one day when i deployed i realized well I represent freedom, and in America we have the freedom of expression. So who am I, as a representative of the Constitution, to swore to uphold that Constitution? Who am I to say you can't express you know, yourself by burning the American flag? I don't like it. I don't. But to have that freedom is an awesome power. Uh, you know. So to, to, I remember I reached a point where I was willing to give my life, uh, you know, defending someone else's right to burn the flag that represented everything that I stood for. So with the Confederate flag, I I don't, I'm not a fan of it, but I think that people should have the right to display it and, and, uh, you know, right or wrong, whether you agree with somebody's beliefs or not, I think having the freedom to express them is 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 a beautiful thing. And uh, moving on to the next hot topic that we hear out there today, you know, everybody's talking about the Supreme Court's decision, um, you know, to uphold gay marriage in the United States. Fantastic. I think it's great. But again, why is this an issue? Why should this even be in the forefront of politics right now? If you're in love, you're in love. You want to get married, get married. Why should somebody else's dogma be creating such an issue? because it's distraction. There's other things that are going on in this world that we need to focus on. Gay marriage should never have even been a political debate. It should never have been out there. It should never have been illegal. It should never have been an issue. Um, and the fact that it's getting so much attention, again, I say, what are we missing? You know, there's a lot of stuff out there that we are. So I'm not going to spend any more time on this stuff. I just wanted to give my two cents on on those subjects there. Uh, you know, love it or hate it, that's that's how I feel about it. Uh, I want to talk today, a little bit today, uh, about the movie Monsters, Inc. If you've ever seen it, it's a, it's a really neat kids movie. Before I get into that, um, you know, the, the, there's a website. It's the, the heartmath.org. It's the Institute of Heart Math, and they do some research. And, you know, I, I spoke in yesterday's podcast um, 
you know, about our, our need to shift our focus. So I'm going to start out with some, some science here first, and I'm just going to read summaries off the, you know, one of the main pages on their website. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the research, um, but heartmath.org, you know, they're looking at the connection of humanity, uh, human beings to the earth and the greater universe, and they're measuring it scientifically. Uh, so on their page, you know, one of the research pages, they have, you know, a couple headings that I want to look at here. The Science of Interconnectivity. The Research Center, it states, the Research Center is currently focusing on studying different types of interconnectivity between people and the Earth's magnetic fields. We were following up on a study that involved 1,600 Global Coherence Initiative members that found a number of significant effects of solar and geometric activity on people's mental functions and emotional states. Now, yesterday I talked about, I referenced my book, I Am Human. I said how the fish in the fish tank, when you change the level of acidity within that fish tank or you change the temperature, you change the food that you're giving them, you know, it affects the, the fish's mood. It, it may cause them to mate. It may cause them to become aggressive. It may cause them to want to go to sleep. Uh, you know, has all these different effects on the fish. Um, and I said, what makes us as human beings any different? There has to be factors in our environment that affect us on the same level that we're not aware of. And this right here is, is exactly what I'm talking about. And then they go a little step further. There's another study they did with human earth connectivity and it says currently we're analyzing data from two groups of participants that wore heart rate variability recorders over long periods to determine how solar and earth magnetic fields affect human nervous system functioning. The results of these studies are showing that people are indeed affected by Earth's energetic environment, though in different ways. We've been surprised by several of the findings and expect, to be, expect there to be more surprises as we continue this research. One surprise was that when several of the Sun and Earth's energetic measures increased, the effect on participants' nervous systems was positive. Mental clarity increased and they felt better. An even more surprising finding from the data was an incident that humans apparently are linked together and synchronizing at a deep level to an external signal in Earth's magnetic field environment. These studies should be published in early 2015, so uh, you know, looking to raise some funds uh, to conduct a multi-site interconnecting the study with groups of participants located, participants located in four locations around the globe. Uh, look, this is this is fascinating. This should be on the front page of, uh, of every news system right now. There is a relationship that affects human mood between, uh, you know, the sun and the earth's magnetic fields. If we understood this better, we put this stuff on our calendars, we could sit there and say, okay, today's going to be a bad day or today's going to be a good day, or, you know, and we can prepare for that. Maybe we can create our own electromagnetic fields through technology that can keep us in a better state, in a better mood. Look at the chaos that was going, that's going on in the world. We're seeing all sorts of riots and, and things of that nature. This, there's a natural relationship and we need to, to understand that. And more importantly, our bodies are putting out a signal, energy, and that's what I want to tie into today. When I when, and and yesterday when I talked about, uh, you know, um, my book I Am Human and and how we're, uh, you know, have a different relationship to the earth and to the environment than than I had spoken of, than we have previously come to believe. So this movie Monsters Inc. You know, I watched this. I, I was given this movie as a gift when I was deployed, and I said, Why is somebody giving me? You know, I'm a 21-year-old soldier. Why are they giving me a kid's movie? I watched it. It was entertaining. I did enjoy the movie. But, again, it's a kid's movie. I have, ki I have children of my own now, so I watched it with them once again the other night. And I'm amazed at what is in this movie. Uh, again, I, I encourage you to read I Am Human for free. It's at servicechange.com slash I Am Human. I want people to, to get this information, uh, you know, because I'm doing research into my next book called Food for the Archons. And one of the things, one of the main focuses of that book is I state that, you know, there's more to humanity than we realize. We may not be at the top of the food chain. And based on ex personal experiences I've had and the research that I've done after those experiences, I, I suggest that, hey, you know, humans are only able to perceive like 1%, if not less, of stuff that exists. With our best technology, 99 point not whatever, 5% of the universe is unmeasurable to us. We're unable to perceive it. Okay, we're, so we're basically blind, deaf, can't perceive stuff around us. So with, with that level of, of ignorance, how can we say that we're alone? How can we say that there's nothing greater than us that, that, that feeds off of us in reality? So what I, what I 
suggest in my book, and I'm not the first person to make such a suggestion, and I'll back this up with other research in my books and, and on my website if you follow it, is that that there's parasites out there. And those parasites uh, not only feed off of the negative human emotion and energy that's out there, but they also are able to manipulate us to create more of that chaos and energy. You know, uh, much like we have, you know, chicken coops and, and, and cattle, uh, you know, and we, we rear them, we're reared in, uh, you know, in, in our own type of uh, chaotic soup for them. And uh, the author Carlos Castaneda called them, you know, humaneros, uh, human coops, basically, based on his uh, speakings with, um, with one of the, the Mexican shamans that he was working and studying with. So is that crazy that, hey, there may be parasites that feed off of human energy and human emotion? Well, let's look at this children's movie, Monsters, Inc. The movie starts out, you know, one of the main characters has one single eye. The emblem for Monsters, Inc. is the M with the all-seeing eye within it. And, and those of you that follow conspiracy theories know that symbol well, the all-seeing eye, you know, going back to uh, to Egypt or those that look into the Illuminati, which I don't like to get into that stuff, but, um, you know, that so that symbol is there. And then you look at the carpet in the, the beginning of the movie of the, of the main uh, monster's home, and it's a snake eating itself, traveling around the carpet, you know, so there, there's a lot of uh, ancient symbolism there in and of itself, and the serpent is, is a key symbol throughout that. But beyond the symbolism that's worked into that movie, uh, the p- premise of this movie is that there are monsters who go to work at an energy factory. The way energy is created is they have a magic doorway into another dimension that leads them into the bedroom of human children. And their job is to scare these children to collect their screams because human screaming why are the kids screaming? Because they're afraid. They say we got to, they call it the scare floor. They scare them to make them afraid. They collect their screams and then they use their screams as energy. The energy powers their entire society. Now, that's what I talked about in my book, I Am Human. I said they use our fear as a source of energy, as a source of nourishment. Is that so crazy? Now, they say it here in a kid's movie. Maybe they're basing it on, on some other something more than just somebody's crazy imagination. I came to those conclusions based on my own personal experiences, not on a movie I saw, not on somebody else's uh, you know fictional book, on experiences that I've had. And now I'm seeing that entire plot play out in the movie Monsters, Inc., a kid's movie. Is somebody trying to tell us something? That's really something that, that I hope that we can think about uh, and consider because it's important. What if this is real? What, you know, then does it not warrant uh, further investigation and understanding? Because if that's true, if, if these things are happening to us, what can we do about it? Well, I initially thought this is hopeless. But in, in, in looking at research, like I read earlier, the Institute of Heart Math, we have a relationship right now. We've always had it with the sun, with the earth, with our environment. And if we can build that relationship, we can first understand that relationship and understand that it's more to it than, than, you know, we just eat meat and die. Um, you know, we can, we can work with that. That's, that's hope right there to me. Um, there, there's a possibility that we can do something about this. So I challenge you to number one, watch the movie. Number two, Read I Am Human and, and We Are Not Who We Think We Are. Go to servicechange.com. Click on the bookstore link if you want to hold the hard copy. I have it available in paperback. Uh, and that would definitely support, you know, Service to Change and, and uh, Service to Change Radio. Uh, you know, if not, you know, uh, go ahead and read it for free online. Sign up for the newsletter, servicechange.com slash I Am Human. But it's something that I, uh, you know, I, I just want to draw your attention to, in you know, in this short amount of time that I have today. It's something I've thought about quite a bit that these these monsters are coming in the night they're scaring us and they're taking that energy uh you know and using it either as a, as a form of nourishment or something else i mean if you look at plants what do plants do plants take the energy from the sun and they absorb it and they use it for food and now studies have shown that number one plants can take the energy of other plants when there's not enough sunlight available science has shown that and a study came out recently i saw it floating across uh, 
I got to find the link for it, but a study shown that there's human beings who are capable of doing the same thing, borrowing the energy of other humans. And if you have ever met an empath, somebody who feels other people's energy, uh, you know, they'll tell you the same thing. These people are out there uh, and they talk about, and I'm not saying the empaths are stealing people's energy. There are people talk about vampires and human parasites, energy parasites. There's a lot of information out there on this stuff, but it's considered fringe. And, and again, my goal is to just get you thinking about it, talking about it and make this a normal conversation. Because if this is true, this is the kind of stuff I think we need to be aware of. It's a function of our of our human existence, of our human condition. And we need to go beyond uh, you know, the five senses that we're currently aware of and, and the basic, you know, you know, um, understanding of, of health and mental health and, and all that stuff. So I hope this, uh, this gets you thinking, you know, and, and again, I just want to thank you for, uh, taking the time to listen to this podcast that, that I'm doing. This is the second one here. I have to say, um, I've been, uh, worked up over the last two days that I've been trying to find the right format for this and do this. And, and I, I'm nervous. I'm not usually one to get nervous to talk about stuff but again it's a new project and uh and a new endeavor so i hope that uh i hope that you enjoy number one service to change radio right now we're, we're streaming just all our change casts all day long and uh, i hope you're enjoying the seeker podcast which which will be airing uh you know four times a day 9 a.m again at 1 p.m 5 p.m and 8 p.m you know each new ep- one ep- new episode every day and on the weekends i'm going to do some kind of archive shows um, you know, a combination of the morning show and, uh, and our change casts. So, but, uh, I, I just want to thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep this one short today, uh, and, and just move on from there. So, um, thank you for, for being a part of this show. I'd love to hear from you. Go to service to change.com, support our network, you know, check on, uh, our bookstore. There's, uh, there's some great books that we have there. Um, you know, in support of service change in this project and this program, uh, you know, hopefully we'll definitely captivate your interest. I hope that you make today a wonderful day. I will spend my day, uh, first, first and foremost, it's, it's early right now. It's about 7 a.m. I've been up for about an hour. Uh, so I'm going to spend my day, uh, doing, I got to do a little more, um, research and studying for my uh, real estate license that I'm working on. So should be a fun and interesting day. I'll spend the rest of the day hanging out with my kids. So it's, uh, it's summertime. I'm going to make the most of it, even though it's been raining for like the past two, three weeks straight, it seems like. So hopefully things will dry out and we can go outside and, and enjoy the rest of our day out here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and end this podcast right now, but I want to thank you for uh, being a part of it. As we say at Service to Change, small changes among the masses can have a massive impact around the world. I encourage you to be that change. Never stop questioning and keep an open mind. Thank you. Welcome to Truth Seekers.